Hello and welcome to Momo Arts TV, a fresh and informative look at key personalities who have made waves in their work. Artists, filmmakers, musicians, actors, CEOs, the ordinary monanchi and many more. We will also feature key spaces that are pockets of pride for our country, Kenya. These are but a taste of what you'll see on our show. Sit back and enjoy. Today we have this amazing person, Diana Rachel Mbogwa, <laughs> editor of Parents Magazine, a magazine that's been around since we were kids, for some of us since we were born. <laughs> And this is an amazing chance to get to know the journey of this amazing lady. She's here to inspire both young men and women, professionals pursuing a similar career in, in the arts, in journalism, in media, in print. And more importantly, we'll later get to talk to Diana about her very own personal journey as a mental health awareness advocate, as well as an anti-gender based violence advocate. So without further ado, we have Diana Karibu. Thank you. <laughs> what an <laughs> intro. <laughs> yeah, actually, yeah. the magazine was there before some of us were, were born. Okay. But yeah. Okay. Thank you for having you just me. just made me look old. No, it's okay. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> You're still young at heart. You're young at heart. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so tell us, like, uh, mm. I mean, there's so much we could always ask. Uh, but the basic thing is, what has brought you to this particular point right now as the editor of Parents. How did this happen? Yeah, just tell us. Okay, wow. Um, it's been a journey. Um, I studied mass communication in uni, um, but I didn't, I didn't see myself here, although I really wanted to practice journalism. Um, so, you know, the, the media industry is really broad, especially mm -hmm. in this day and age. But when I was studying, it was all about um, you either want to be in TV as a reporter or, yeah, writing for a good publication. Okay. So my passion is in um, telling stories, um, particularly human interest, um, stories that make an impact in the society and, uh, you know, bring change. Um, yeah, I like to do such stories. So, yeah, I started as a reporter um, back in the day, in 2013. Before that, I was just doing my own photography stuff because um, I'm also passionate about photography and stuff and video and film. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, production. Um, yeah, so I started as a reporter and then I was a presenter for a health show, a farming show also. <laughs> Um, was that Shamba Shape Up? Because that's no. the only show I've ever seen on Actually, it was called Helam Changani. Very, very nice show. You ah, should nice check name. it out on YouTube. Helam yeah. Changani. Mm. Ah, nice. Making money out of, you know, your produce. Ah. Yeah, so it was very nice. I had a really great experience with that. Mm -hmm. um, I learned a lot about production because I was the producer, um, the director of my own show. I used to write my own script and still present, you know. Um, just multitasking. Wow. I even learned how to video edit my own show. Wow. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So in the, I, I learned that in the media, you just have to be um, conversant with a lot. Um, you have to have all the skills. You can't just say, I'm going to be telling stories or just be a reporter or being a news anchor, mm -hmm. you know, just s looking pretty on TV and writing your own. I mean, someone writes your script and then you just come and, you know, present. So you have to just have all the, the knowledge. And I'm grateful that I got that um, experience. So um, later, I decided to just take a break for like a year, um, just doing some self, um, you know, discovery, just learning myself what I want to do. Do I want to continue with the media? Around which years were those? Or which so years? that is 2017. Okay. is when I didn't do anything to do with media much, mm -hmm. but I was doing digital marketing. I was um, working with uh, two friends of mine um, who we used to work with at WTV. Okay. Um, yeah, so we decided to do something and we'd do some production together. And um, yeah, I, I, so I would, I would, well, I also learned to do stuff on digital marketing. I got a chance to train with Google and Facebook and so that gave me a chance to, you know, just learn more on digital okay. stuff. 
So I would even train people on digital skills then. Um, yeah, then in 2018, I decided to get back to the media. So I went to Ibru TV mm -hmm. as a news anchor and a reporter. Okay. Just doing what I always wanted to do, telling stories and presenting them. Um, yeah, so I stayed there for like two, three years, almost, um, 2020 November. Mm -hmm. I decided to call it quits um, for reasons I don't know if I should mention here. <laughs> no, go ahead. I mean, the thing is... Uh, it's okay. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. And, and I think uh, that's what we had a chat earlier in the run-up to this yes. interview. You were mentioning, or rather we mentioned that sometimes, and it's happening even with young people, Yeah, they can relate to this, where you quit a boss or exactly. you quit a toxic work environment or yeah. you quit a situation more so than quitting the job itself. The job itself, yes, because, yeah. I mean, I love to tell stories. It's something I will not stop doing. Yeah, I, I, this is something I, I foresee myself doing in the long run and in my future. So I quit because um, of a toxic environment. Um, yeah, so you, you quit your boss, like you said, or you quit the situation that mm -hmm. your boss puts you into. Right. You just get to a point where you feel it's no longer working for you and you want better um, I mean, I've had so many of my friends in the media as well complain of how, you know, the newsroom looks, you know, when you're on mm -hmm. TV, yeah. it's all glam. You really never know what's happening behind the scenes. So, yet there's so much. Um, there's a lot. There's a lot that can, you know, affect your mental wellness. And so, if you're not ready to deal with that, then you for me, I was like, I can't. Mm -hmm. I've I've done it. I've, I mean, I've just um, I've, I've been there. I I don't want to do it anymore. So, yeah, I decided to call it quits. So many people questioned why um, I would do that, but I realized so many people don't understand the importance of just you being okay. Yeah, and, and and the importance of you saying that you're not okay. So guys will judge you. They'll be like, so what are you going to do next? Um, you can't find a job when you're not already in a job. Um, and I was like, so would I rather be dragging myself every day to work? Or would I just uh, doing? Because at that time now it feels like... Um, you're just doing it for the money. Yeah. And even the money is not even enough, as people assume. You yeah. know, guys, you know, in the media make so much money. It's only a few individuals or brands that make that money. Because and of even their names. so, what you said, yeah. like, even if it's money, you ask yourself, is it worth, is it worth doing your... that damage to your exactly. well being and your wellness? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So I took a break. Um, I realized I had been so depressed. So. I took it to myself to, you know, try to love myself again, um, getting to know what I really want. So I would even exercise. I used to jog every morning for like four months just to, it used so to work for me. you were out of the house for four months. You jogged for four months. Yeah. I'm joking. I, I Shut your mouth. You, you know, I, I don't know. I'm so tired. When you said I jogged for four months, I'm thinking, <laughs> what stamina is this? You. Anyway, I anyway but yeah. <laughs> So you, you'd, you'd jog consistently? Yeah, every morning, yeah. every morning, yeah. just to get my mental state back. Because I realized, um, even staying at home, sometimes you just get... Okay, so I was just asking about... Uh, we've been, been speaking a lot about mental health. Yes. And we've been speaking about the institution of the family. Mm -hmm. And now I would just want to get your thoughts on role models and mentorship for young boys and girls. These are people who are growing up and they'll be our future leaders, they'll be a, the future workforce. Yeah. Uh, what do you think can be done to ensure that we have a better crop in the next generation? People who are better than us and those who come after them are even mm. better than they are. Okay, yeah. Um, you've talked about, you've mentioned um, mentorship. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's something that lacks a lot um, in the in where we are at right now as a society, you find um, Robert is doing very well, but um, he has no time or he doesn't have the idea or 
he doesn't make time to mentor you know other people so that um i mean i feel like in our leadership positions we should be able to just create and pass that um our knowledge and and you know that skill the, the, okay not really skill set but you know just the knowledge of how to maneuver or how to go about um, the certain topic that you're you know pursuing mm -hmm. or a certain career um it doesn't have to be about career it could be just about mentorship on on life issues um yeah i feel like guidance is so important when we have it especially in this day and age when there's just so much um so much a lot that could you know guide the way we take um things or we pursue things so um yeah i really feel it's important to mm -hmm. have even just one role model and it's also up to us or the youth um i'm, I'm still young yeah i'm still i'm still under 35 <laughs> <laughs> you know to just as well reach out to you know people we feel for yeah. example for me um i would say um mrs Mathu, who is the you know md of parents magazine she's really really Brilliant mentored woman. me mm -hmm. she's mentored me in terms of you know even just improving my writing how to talk to clients you know how to make partnerships it's not always about you know the money mm -hmm. it's it's the relationships you build with people and so it's very important i, th I think it's a thing that we should embrace you okay. know just being there for other people and you know also seeking for help yeah okay yeah do you think that uh, social media could be used more positively i'm thinking like we have this double-edged sword mm. so on one hand we have social media as being a neutral tool and people don't think that way the thing is, it's a double-edged sword. On mm. one hand, it can be used positively. You can even use it for learning. And on the other hand, it can be used to do things that take away value or harm. Absolutely. We've seen scammers, uh, fraudsters, criminals using social media. And likewise, we've been seeing young people getting their mentorship subconsciously, even unconsciously, mm. by consuming content haphazardly on social media. Yeah. Prostitution has moved to social media. Yeah. Right now, we have many young women easily getting lured by quick money and they can send an image, they can send a video, mm. the, uh, a promiscuous image, and they get all this money. Yeah. And that is something that is really hard to track. And obviously, in the long term, it does more injury to society. Very true. So, I don't know what your thoughts are like on, um, on social media and how do we, how do we manage this? Well, um, it goes back to like you said, social media can be a positive tool and also a very negative tool. And it just all depends on, um, for kids, for example, uh, we were doing a campaign as, again on, on family online safety. Mm. Uh, because, you know, for example, I, I interviewed a mom who said um, her child, she was shocked to go to his Instagram page and find all the content was all pornographic material. Oh. And then you, you're like, this is my child. Mm. So he influences the other kids. Yeah. So all the, the other kids as well got like addicted. My goodness. So yeah. you see, it's also uh, goes, you know, uh, um, it goes back to you as a parent. Um, are you watching what your kids are watching? Um, and then there's also, now there's a part where sometimes I, I don't know how to, you know, when you're a teen or when you, you buy your child a phone. Yeah. Um, I don't know. But when you say from the age of, say, 18, now you're an adult, to maybe 25, there's a lot of, you know, all those guys who are luring these young women into, you know, just getting what, you know, money and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think it still goes back down to how you guide your kids. Up you to know? that 18. How yeah, do you guide your kids you up to that 18? To so now ensure after, that, yeah, 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 that yeah. Um, you should know that whenever this person, for example, talks to you about, you know, and life, and you should let them know that life is not about easy money. Um, when people, you know, reach out to you to ask for such photos and stuff, 
I mean, it's just about guiding your, your kids, yeah? Mm. And that's why you talked about as well, having a father figure mm. is very important or even just being there for our kids. I mm. realize sometimes we are so busy with our work lives. When we get home, you just want your, you just ensure that your child has eaten. That's it. Unampia simu. It's a, it's a pacifier at some point, you know, it's just a distraction so that you, you can have your time, you know, so we're not really there. We don't guide our kids to the real issues in the happening in the society. And that's why you, you find a lot of cases like those. Um, but then again, there's also the positive side of social media where there's a lot of information. It's educative. Mm. So it's really just up to you as a parent or as a guardian to you know as an elder sister an elder brother to guide your you know siblings and your kids mm. to the content that they should be consuming yeah yeah and even like uh, with uh, parenting i feel that in our generation people who are probably born people who are over 30 right now mm -hmm. that kind of generation there were there was the good and bad of the way they were parented mm. and most people would say that the parenting was impersonal where um, you are provided for which is f fantastic that's one aspect of mm. parenting like getting the material needs for your children yeah. paying their fees getting them clothed getting them shelter ensuring they're not they're healthy but another, what went forgotten is building a relationship with your children exactly like i would find there's a there's a neighbor of mine when i was younger maybe in the 90s growing up i would visit him and we get very familiar and you'd visit these people and you'd sometimes stay over for even supper yeah what used to happen is once the parents came home and those mm -hmm. days it was typical nine to five so yes. more more people were nine to fivers than say entrepreneurs yeah so you'd find all this the parents come home maybe at six o'clock. Mm -hmm. But the minute the parents come, it's like the children used to be scared and they would run off to the bedroom. So many households. Yeah. yeah. And then what you'd find happening is they are called down for supper. Yeah. And then, or even called down slightly before to be asked, have you done your homework? Mm. Have you full prepared your, have you polished your shoes for tomorrow? There was have no bonding. Prepared? Yeah, it was very, it's like the children were employees in that house. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you so, know how yeah. people are comparing it to you know the way nowadays like in a normal household people are on their phones yeah yeah when eating dinner mm. but it's not any different from yeah. you know from the way us we used to just go away yeah you know there's no, it's not like until you're, you're called. Direct, yeah, until you're called down yeah. it's it's just really the relationship we build with our kids mm. so i would really just love for us like for parents to just you know yeah. Get to bond with your child. Get to know what they like, what they don't like. Mm. Um, you know, it's like have a date with your kids. Have mm. a date with, you know, just get to know them more. Mm. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Do not forget to subscribe to our channel. And if there's a person or review you'd wish to see, reach out to us via email. Till next time. Bye-bye.